Hi, we had already started this chapter, the French Revolution, and under it, we had already studied the conditions prevailing in France in 18th century under Louis XVI, and uh, we had studied that uh, the onus of tax was mainly on the third state, which were becoming poorer day by day because they had to pay so much of direct and indirect taxes to the state. The means of uh, so the means of earning was less, but the taxes they had to pay were, were more. Naturally, they rose in revolt, and then came the famine, which worsened their condition. Right now, peasants and workers were not in a condition to revolt. As a result, the richer people among the third uh, state, the people who had acquired wealth and who were more educated, they raised their voice against the privileges which were given to the clergy and the nobility. Right now, the condition was right or the condition was appropriate for the outbreak of the revolt. So, in this uh, chapter, we will study, in this, under this topic, we will study the final outbreak of the, of the revolt. How did it happen or what, what were the immediate, immediate conditions of the outbreak of the revolt? So, on 5th, May 1789, Louis XVI, that is Louis XVI, called an assembly of the States Journal. State Journal. So this assembly was called to pass proposals for new taxes and the power to call the assembly lay, with, lay in the hands of the monarch only. So, it was uh, uh, up to the monarch when to call the assembly and when not to call this uh, estate journal. So, on 5th May 1789, Louis sixteenth under this power called the assembly of estates journal to pass proposals for new taxes and in estates journal all the members or all the representatives of the three states used to sit and take our decisions. So, representatives from all the state attended it first and second your first and second states had 300 representatives, whereas third state had 600 representatives. So, <coughs> these, uh, the third state which has six, uh, 600 representatives which were in majority, they were not treated properly. They were not even given the place to sit. They were they were uh, allowed to stand at the back behind the first and the second states. So, in past, the voting, in past, the voting used to be on the basis of one vote for each state. Each state in past voting used to be on the basis of one vote for each state. So, that, that didn't represent the third state appropriately. Right now, when this assembly, when this uh, state's journal was called upon, the third assembly demanded, the third state demanded that each member in the assembly should have one vote. That is, each member should be allowed to take part in the decisions of the journal state by voting. That is, each member should have one vote. So, right now, <coughs> members demanded voting be conducted by assembly as whole with each M member having one vote. Naturally, this proposal was rejected. This proposal was not at all accepted. Though <coughs> the grievances of the third state were more, they were more in number, they had lots of grievances, but still 
their their proposal was rejected now what happened when the proposal was rejected what happened when the proposal of the third sm uh, third state was rejected so when proposal was rejected the members of uh, the third state they walked out they didn't participate further in the meeting then on june 20th or 20th june they assembled in the hall of an outdoor tennis court in the grounds of versailles so here they declared themselves as national assembly national assembly the one which represented the large number of people largest population that is the third state they declared themselves as national assembly and swore not to disperse till they frame the constitution till they frame their constitution the constitution the type of constitution which they wanted was which should be representative that is the powers the absolute powers of the monarch would be limited in such a constitution they wanted a type of constitution where the absolute powers of the monarch would be limited and representation would be given to all the sections of the society so when all these activities were going on over there the rest of the france was in turmoil it was uh, in turmoil because of uh, the severe because of severe famine the crop has failed because of the winters the crop has failed and the people they didn't had enough food there was uh, uh, not enough uh, grains for them and uh, they as a result they were agitated they revolted and uh, the agitation uh, uh, soon spread to whole of the france they the agitated crowd on july 14th just finally destroyed bastel so and almost soon the revolt it uh, spread to whole of the country and the people they started attack attacking the houses and the castles or the residences of the uh, noblemen and the clergy because they were the people who were enjoying privileges and these people were against the privileges enjoyed by them so naturally they were against them they wanted to destroy the power uh, or the wealth amassed by them because of the atrocities done on them so a large number of nobles they fled from their homes many of them migrating to the neighboring country as a result because the peasants they started looting the hoarded grain they burned down the documents which contained the records of uh, the manorial dues the dues which they had to give to their feudal masters they burned those records in order to liberate themselves so this was this was the kind of uh, developments that were taking place naturally the king was fair, was uh, the naturally the king was alarmed and out of fear he declared he gave in out of uh, uh, fear he gave in and declared national assembly as the rightful assembly uh, it re it recognized the national assembly so king louis was uh, king louis was alarmed and he gave in when he gave in he did lots of thing to change the system first was he accorded most important he accorded status to national assembly he accepted that his powers would be checked by the constitution accepted that his powers would be checked by 
constitution which would be drafted by the national assembly or third he passed the decree abolishing feudal system feudal system based on obligations based on privileges and taxes based on privileges to upper classes and taxes on the part of the lower classes then clergy they enjoyed enormous power clergy to give up their privileges then the taxes which were collected by the clergy that is the church tithes abolished then sixth land owned by church was confiscated owned by church taken and seventh government as a result of all these developments the government acquired billion of uh, rupees billion of livres that is the currency in the france they acquired billion of livres so the government was financially now stable it uh, that kind of financial instability which we had studied which was in the beginning of the 18th century under uh, louis uh, 16th because of long years of wars and maintaining the palace that was gone away and because of all these developments the state acquired billions of livres so there was financial stability at that time so the outbreak under outbreak of the revolution we had studied the developments which took place which led to the outbreak of uh, the revolution was the calling of uh, the uh, the calling of the uh, states journal that is assembly of states journal to pass a resolution for proposals of new taxes by louis 16 when he called the assembly all the three states were called upon the third state it wanted a new system of voting where every member should be given one vote so that uh, the voice their voice would be more be according to their population which was reject rejected the states uh, the third state they marched out of the assembly there only they declared themselves national assembly and swore not to disperse the, until they would uh, frame a new constitution which would, which would limit the powers of the monarch the when all these developments were taking place we had studied then uh, severe famine occurred then at that time because of the severe famine in france the peasants uh, or the lower uh, people lower peasant uh, the poor poorer people they because of the lack of food they agitated and finally stopped basted basetel and uh, destroyed it the peasants revolt spread to almost whole part of the country and they attack the residences of uh, noble uh, noble uh, noble nobility and clergy because of all these developments which were taking place because of the revolts and instability and chaos uh, and uh, uh, and chaos uh, louis 16th finally gave in and he accepted the demands of uh, the third state according to these demands he accorded the status to the, the national assembly accepted that his powers would be checked by the constitution his absolute monarchy came to an end he passed decree abolishing feudal system based on privileges and taxes he gave clergy <clears throat> he uh, clergy to give up their uh, privileges he also accepted that the privileges which were given to the upper two caste uh, upper two estates that would be finished and tithes were abolished land owned by church uh, church was taken was confiscated by the state as a result of all these development financial stability was maintained in the in the country now constit uh, now this france it became a constitutional monarchy from absolute monarchy it transformed to constitutional monarchy where the monarch was the constitutional head and the real powers were enjoyed by the national assembly so france became a constitutional monarchy 
in 1791 national assembly drafted constitution whose main aim was to finish absolute monarchy whose main aim was to limit the powers of the monarch since at that time the monarch uh, the monarch of the country he uh, enjoyed absolute powers whatever he used to say was the rule of the nation so that was gone with the drafting of the new constitution by national assembly which was a representative assembly the powers were divided the constitution was based on the separation of power where the powers were divided between executive legislature and judiciary france now became a constitutional monarchy with the real power the real power it laid with the national assembly which was a representative assembly and uh, the monarch was just a constitutional head of the state he he didn't enjoyed any real power the national assembly was elected indirectly indirectly means people elected certain electors people elected certain representatives and these representatives in turn elected the national assembly so this was how uh, the national assembly was represent was made representative so that is citizen voted for a group of electors who in turn choose the assembly so not all the people were given the right to vote only those women were exempted from the right to vote only those men who were above the age of 25 years and who owned property that is uh, the people who uh, paid taxes equal to at least 3 days of la uh, laborers wage they were allowed to vote so who who were allowed to vote people men above 25 years of age and who paid taxes who paid taxes equivalent to at least 3 days of laborers wages they were turned they were termed as active citizens where is the remaining men and women remaining men and women they were termed as passive citizens so in 1791 national assembly drafted the constitution which curbed the absolute power of the monarch monarch was now a constitutional head the real powers lay with the national assembly the powers was divided among the executive legislature and judiciary and the national assembly it was though it was not directly elected but it was elected indirectly by all those people uh, who uh, by it was uh, that that is it was elected by the city that is the citizens voted for a group of electors who in turn chose the assembly only those men who were above 25 years of age and who paid taxes they were allowed to vote they were termed as active citizens whereas the remaining men and women they were termed as passive citizens the constitution which they drafted they it begin with the declaration of rights of men it begin with the declaration of rights of man and citizens declaration of human rights you can say so <clears throat> so rights such as right to life freedom of speech freedom of opinion equality before law these were established as natural and inalienable inalienable rights means these rights could not be taken away by anyone not even by the state and there were certain guarantees that if so that, that that if rights these rights were taken away by the state then certain limitations were put on the powers of the uh, executive so they belong to each human being by birth and they cannot be taken away it was the duty of the state to protect the citizens natural right so so some of the rights mentioned under declaration of rights of men and women are that men are born 
and remain free and equal in rights that is right to equality then sovereignty of the state uh, was established then liberty uh, liberty equality and fraternity was mentioned there then since property is a sacred and inviolable right the right to property was also mentioned so all these rights which uh, are uh, adopted uh, by which uh, which are there in the constitution of almost every country of the world right now also these were adopted way back during french revolution in the declaration of rights of men and citizen and this declaration was in turn adopted by many nations of the world so it was very much uh, it it uh, had great significance in the world history that's all under this topic under this topic we had studied the outbreak of the revolution the causes the immediate causes and the transformation of france from absolute monarchy to constitutional monarchy that's it thank you